organs can really enhance your sexual experience. So if you're not using one, you're missing out. Today, I'm Dr. Rena Malik, urologist and pelvic surgeon, and I'm gonna to talk to you all about the different kinds of lubricants, what to look out for when you're buying your lubricant, and why you should use one over the other. are used as an intended substitute for natural moisture and they're really intended to decrease the friction during penetrative intercourse. Researchers estimate that lubricants have been used for well over a thousand years in places like Japan, Korea, and China. In fact, the first time a lubricant was actually reported to be used was in 350 BC in the ancient Rome and ancient Greece where they used olive oil as a lubricant. Since then, there's been a number of different sorts of things that have been used for lubricants, including carrageen, which is made from seaweed, mashed yams, and even clove oil. So what are some general rules when looking for a lubricant? So if you're planning to use this lubricant for vaginal intercourse, you wanna make sure that the pH of the lubricant matches the pH of the vagina, which is about between 3.5 and 4.9. If you're using a lubricant for anal intercourse, the anal pH is somewhere around six. So you wanna use different lubricants for anal intercourse than you would use for vaginal intercourse. Also important when you're looking at water-based lubricants, which we'll talk about a little more, is looking at the osmolality. What's the osmolality? Osmolality is how concentrated the product is that you're using. So if the osmolality of a lubricant is higher than the osmolality of vaginal tissue, which is around 285 to 295 nanograms per milliliter, then you can actually have the lubricant causing the tissues to take water from the tissues and put it towards the lubricant, which is more concentrated, causing some dryness and dehydration of the vaginal tissues. So the World Health Organization, or the WHO, recommends that all vaginal lubricants, particularly water-based lubricants, have a pH of less than 4.5 and a osmolality of less than 1,200 nanograms per milliliter. So we'll talk a little bit about that as we go through some lubricants. There are three main categories of lubricants that we're gonna cover, and exactly why you should use one over the other and what ingredients to look out for. So before I start reviewing the different types of lubricants, let's go over some of those ingredients you wanna avoid. First off, you wanna avoid anything that has parabens in it. Parabens is an ingredient that's been used to actually extend the life of an ingredient, but it has been linked to some endocrine disruption and potential fertility problems. Also has been known to be very irritating to the skin. So you'll see a lot of the lubricants that I recommend today, actually all of them don't have any parabens in them. Another one is nonoxinil 9, which is a spermicide, which is actually designed to kill all microbes. And what that does is it actually kills some of the healthy bacteria in the vagina puts you at higher risk for getting other types of infections. Similarly, chlorhexidine is also an ingredient that sometimes you see, which is actually an antibacterial and can cause the same problems. Another ingredient to avoid is benzocaine. If you see something that says benzocaine in the ingredient, that's actually a numbing ingredient. And so that will actually cause numbness of the genitalia. And if that's not what you're going for, you don't want to use it. And for some people, it can cause irritation. If you're looking at silicone-based supplements, you want to avoid specific types of silicones that have been linked to endocrine disruption and even uterine cancer. And these include cyclomethicone and cyclopentasiloxane. So make sure you look out for those. Lastly, petroleum jelly or Vaseline should not be used for vaginal intercourse because it actually has a pH that is not similar to vaginal pH and can cause pH disruptions and lead to yeast infections or other sorts of discomfort in the vagina. In addition to things like Vaseline or petroleum jelly, you wanna avoid using lotions or baby oils as a lubricant because these are not well suited for vaginal lubrication. And for some of these lubricants, if they have flavors or fragrances added, you wanna check out their website and see what kinds of flavors and fragrances are they using? Are these natural? Are these food grade? Are they edible? Because some of them can be irritating or because it's a vague ingredient, they can put other things that are also an undisclosed flavor or fragrance but are not necessarily safe. Okay, so there are three major categories of lubricants. There are water-based lubricants, silicone-based lubricants, and oil-based lubricants. Water-based lubricants are great because they're easy to wash off, they are cheap, they're readily available, and you can use them with condoms and sex toys pretty safely. The cons are that they do need to be reapplied over and over again because they dry off and they evaporate. So some, you know, just using it at the beginning of intercourse may not be enough. 
enough. Also for anal intercourse, sometimes you may want to use something that's going to last a little bit longer. Sometimes they can have some additives that can be concerning, so make sure you check out the ingredient list. For silicone-based lubricants, the pros of this are that they last a long time. And so you can just apply once, use a very little amount, and it will last you a long time. They're a little bit more slippery and a little bit more fun. You can use these with condoms, but you do have to be careful in using them with your sex toys because sometimes in certain situations, they can degrade silicone sex toys. But if you have sex toys that are not made of silicone, they're good to go. As far as oil-based lubricants, these are great because they again last a long time. They are readily available. You can find oils in your kitchen cupboard like coconut oil, olive oil, even Crisco, which can be used for lubrication and can you know really help in that area. The cons are that they cannot be used with latex condoms because they can degrade latex and so they are not safe for that purpose. They also can stain your sheets a little bit and be a little bit hard to clean up. All right, let's first talk about water-based lubricants. These are the most popular, cheapest lubricants that are available in your drug stores and are typically less irritating. I will preface this by saying you can be irritated by a number of different ingredients in lubricants. So if you find that you're having a reaction and you've started a new lubricant, toss that lubricant out, call the company, whatever, and try something different. The cons of water-based lubricants are that they are water-based, so they evaporate. So you do need to reapply quite frequently. They're also not good for water play. So if you're trying to use lubricants in the shower, they'll just wash off. So the first one we're going to talk about is Lube Life, the water-based lubricant. And this is great because it is, again, free of parabens, uh, silicones, oils, anything like that. So these are safe to use with condoms. They are safe to ingest if you are having oral sex. And the nice thing about this company is that it is one of the highest rated lubricants on Amazon. You can see over 80,000 ratings of the product on Amazon. They'll give you a 100% money back guarantee if you don't like the ingredient. It's also a huge bang for your buck. It's about $11 for this huge bottle, which is eight fluid ounces. So you certainly get a lot for your money. And lastly, all their ingredients are made right here in the United States. So you can, you know, support our country by buying some Lube Life. So let's go over some of the ingredients. Water is the first ingredient. The second ingredient is propendiol, which is a solvent that's used to help things kind of mix together. It's generally considered food grade and safe to eat as long as you're not taking large quantities of it. However, some people can find some irritation with it. The next ingredient is gluconolactone. And gluconolactone is a humectant, which is essentially an ingredient that helps hydrate an area. It's typically used in a lot of skincare products like exfoliants, and it's a gentle acid that's found in honey and fruits, very natural. The next ingredient is hydroxyethylcellulose, which is also a solvent. A hydroxyethylcellulose is a plant-based product which is found in a number of ingredients that are kind of help to thicken materials. It's used in a lot of cosmetics and it's generally considered very safe. And lastly, sodium benzoate and citric acid are preservatives. So let's see how this feels. All right. So no fragrance. Feels pretty smooth and silky on my skin. Overall, not bad at all. So the pH of the water-based lubricant ranges from 3.6 to 4.7, so it's in that good range. And the osmolality is 600 to 700 milliosms per kilogram, which is slightly higher than vaginal osmolality, but probably not a problem for the large majority of people. So Lube Life also offers a number of flavored lubricants. They also offer anal lubricants. And so let's talk about their flavored lubricants. Their mint chocolate chip is actually their most popular lubricant. It specifically in and of itself has over 40,000 reviews on Amazon. And let's go over some of the ingredients for these flavored based lubricants. So I don't particularly like mint chocolate chips, so I'm gonna look at their strawberry based lubricant. And this one has water. It has glycerin. So glycerin is a ingredient that you will see on a lot of websites saying that you should not use this in your lubricant. So the reason people use glycerin is because it's a humectant or it seals in the moisture inside of an ingredient. But it, because of the way glycerin is made, it increases the osmolality of the lubricant, which can then lead 
people to be at more risk for vaginal yeast infections. That's why if you're using lubricant for the first time, maybe I would hold off on the glycerin components, but if you've tried it once and you enjoy it, it can be really fun, especially if you're just using it for oral sex or other things, it does have an interesting flavor to it. So the ingredients listed here, uh, you can see them right here. And so there's a couple of new ingredients. Potassium sorbate is an additive that is usually used for preservatives. And then we have flavor. Again, you have to be careful on their website. They do say that all the flavors are food grade and sucralose, which is an additive sweetener, which for some people can be irritating. So let's taste and feel this one. Smells like strawberry, like, you know, strawberry candy. So pretty strong flavors. So if you're into strong flavors and you like these kinds of flavors, they have strawberry, mint chocolate chip, cotton candy, and watermelon. So you can take your pick. Again, super cheap and could be fun for oral sex. The other cool thing about the flavored lubricants is if you're not sure and you don't want to invest a ton, they come in these 0.3 fluid ounce packets and you can try any of their flavors with the cost of shipping. So next lube is unbound water-based lubricant and you can get this for about $16 for three ounces, so a little bit pricier than Lube Life. I'm gonna link all the lubes I used in this video down below, so feel free to check out their websites and buy one that you think is nice. So this is a water-based lubricant, but actually the first ingredient here is organic aloe barbadensis leaf juice, which is essentially aloe vera. So this would actually fall into a category of plant-based or aloe-based lubricants, which are very similar to water-based lubricants, but they use aloe vera instead of water as their first ingredient. The other ingredients include xanthan gum and agar, which are both thickeners, lactic acid, which is an acid that helps it get to a lower pH that's more resembles the pH of the vagina, potassium sorbate, which we already saw before, sodium benzoate, and natural flavor. And on their website, they say the natural flavor is vanilla and lemon, and it's all food grade. So let's see. This smells really great. Mm, I like that smell a lot. All right, let's see what this looks like. Okay, it's a little bit thicker than the last one. Ooh, I kind of like that. I'm gonna taste it. So it tastes kind of like a lemon cake, but very subtle, not strong at all. So if you don't like strong flavors, this is a good one. Awesome. All right, so interestingly, this on the back of their bottle, it says manufactured for good, clean love. Right, and so Good Clean Love is actually another company that has lubricants as well. And they have a lubricant called Almost Naked, which has the exact same ingredients as this lubricant. And it's available for $11.99 for four ounces. The great thing about the Good Clean Love bottle is that for every bottle you purchase of theirs, they'll actually donate to an organization that reduces greenhouse gases for the same amount of carbon footprint that it makes to actually create the bottle. So that's kind of cool. So I've linked them below as well. So Good Clean Love also has a couple lubricants on their website that are safe for sensitive skin. So if you have sensitive skin, you may wanna check out that lubricant or if you are trying to conceive. So you have to be careful when you're trying to conceive because some lubricants can actually impair sperm motility. And this particular lubricant has been tested to see that it does not impair sperm motility and safe to use when you're trying to conceive. And the pH rating for both of these lubricants is between 4.2 and 4.7. And this has the lowest osmolality rating I've seen it ranges from 250 to 400 milliosms per kilogram so really isoosmolar to vaginal tissues so the next couple uh, lubricants I'm going to share with you are both aloe based lubricants this is mods shine lubricant and interestingly, Dakota Johnson, the famous actress from Fifty Shades of Grey, just signed on as co-creative director of Mod. And this is a relatively new company that sells not only personal lubricants, but sex toys, condoms, and it's really gained a cult-like following. So this is another aloe-based lubricant. And if you look here, it has aloe barbadensis leaf juice as its first ingredient. Again, aloe-based, so that's good. Uh, propendial, which we talked about before, a lot of ingredients we've mentioned before, a number of seed extracts, which are all uh, naturally occurring ingredients, 
xanthan gum, which we talked about as well. And then at the very end, a couple small preservatives, sodium benzoate, potassium sorbate, and citric acid. It is not tested on animals. It has a 12 month shelf life, which it says here, if you guys didn't know, this little icon on the back of product tells you how long the shelf life is of a certain ingredient. So your face washes, your makeups, your lubricants, anything like that, just make sure to take a look. And it's also recyclable. On their website, they have one with a pump top that you can use, which is a little bit easier. It's safe to use with condoms as are all water-based lubricants, safe to use with sex toys as are all water-based lubricants. However, on their website, they say this is not edible. So do not eat it or use it for oral sex. Alrighty. Okay. That was a little less thick than our last one and uh, feels really nice. Actually warms up a little bit uh, quicker than the other ones. It's about $25 for an eight ounce bottle. And the pH of this lubricant is between four and five, and it is considered isoosmotic, although I don't have the exact osmolality. The next one is Promescent Premium Lubricant, which is also a water-based lubricant. They also have an aloe-based lubricant that is very similar to Mode Shine Lubricant. So the water-based lubricant does have glycerin in it. So again, the same concerns that we talked about last time with glycerin do apply if you're at risk for yeast infections. I would not recommend it, but their aloe-based lubricant, again, as I mentioned, has the exact same ingredients as the Shine Mode. And it gets you four ounces for about $10. They also have a 60-day, 100% money-back guarantee. So you can check them out as well. Moving on, silicone-based lubricants. The pros of silicone-based lubricant is that it lasts a lot longer than water-based lubricants. So you don't need to uh, reapply as often and a little bit goes a long way. You will have a much smaller bottle of silicone-based lubricant, but it will last a lot longer for you. It can be used with condoms, but it should not be used with silicone sex toys because it can cause some degradation of silicone-based sex toys. The one that I've heard lots about, although I didn't get here to try out today, is called Uber Lube. And this is recommended by a lot of my colleagues uh, because it really only has two major ingredients. It has silicones, which are all medical grade silicones, and a little bit of vitamin E, which in this specific formulation for lubricants acts as a preservative. The cool part about it is it comes in this really very neat looking glass bottle and you can get it for about $18. However, as I mentioned, you're gonna get a much smaller bottle. It's less than two ounces for that price, but it will last you a much longer time. Another silicone based lubricant here is by Lube Life right here. I wanted to try one in front of you guys. Um, this also has two silicones, dimethicone and dimethiconol, as well as vitamin E, which is the same thing as tocopherol. So let's try this one. So kind of thin, which is exactly what it's called. It's called a uh, barely there thin silicone lubricant. So it definitely feels different. It's more slippery, a little more fun maybe when you're uh, trying to uh, have fun. It's good for use, um, again, in the shower. It won't wash off easily. A little bit more messier to clean up. So make sure you use some soap to get this off. All right, so lastly, we're gonna talk about oil-based lubricants. So oil-based lubricants, what are the great things about oil-based lubricants? Well, they're readily available. You can find oils even in your kitchen, and we'll talk about which ones you can try to use. They are gonna last a long time, and they usually are not irritating. The cons of them are that you cannot use them with condoms because they will degrade the latex in the condoms. Some people may have allergic reactions to them because of the nuts or seeds that are used in the oil, so make sure if you do have food-grade allergies, don't use these kind of lubricants unless you're sure you're not allergic to the specific seed or nut that the oil comes from. And lastly, they can stain your sheets. I'm going to start talking about coconut, which is an oil-based lubricant. And this one is a three ounce bottle, which is about $24.99. And it has a number of ingredients, uh, a bunch of oils, sunflower seed, coconut, shea butter, coconut seed butter, um, basically all natural oils and, um, and also tocopherol, again, which is vitamin E and is kind of a preservative. Uh, it is free of all the, in, you know, the, the dangerous ingredients. It is 100% edible and cruelty free. So let's uh, see how this one feels. Okay, so much thicker in consistency and uh, feels really soft and nice. A little less slippery than the silicones, but you just need a little bit to coat, you know, a large area. 
So pretty nice. The other nice thing about Kokonu is for every bottle purchased, they donate a portion of their proceeds to the Ovarian Cancer Research Association. They also have a water-based lubricant, which is coconut water-based, as well as some hemp seed oil that you can use for massage or other things like that. So check out their company as well. And so lastly, what kind of oils can you use? So coconut oil is a great oil to use because it's a little bit thicker consistency. It doesn't get very runny right away. And you can typically find it in your cupboard. But the things to know about coconut oil is it does have a pH that is higher than the vaginal pH. So if you're prone for yeast infections, you may wanna avoid coconut oil. Also, if you're allergic, don't use it. The plus side of it is that it has anti-yeast and antibacterial properties. Coconut oil also can be used as a vaginal moisturizer. So if you find that you're having some dryness, you can use it for that purpose as well. The other thing to know, you know, coconut oil usually comes in a big jar. You don't want to keep sticking your finger in there to use it. Have a little scoop to take some out and then put it on your hand and then use it as necessary so that you're not putting the germs from your hands back in the bottle. Okay guys, that's it. All of these products are linked in the description below. None of this video was sponsored by any company or anything like that. These are just some lubricants that I wanted to try and share with you guys because there are so many lubricants available on the market. Find one that works for you. Find one that's affordable in your price range, one that you enjoy working with and have fun. Always remember to take care of yourself because you're worth it.